there was a back and forth between John Merrill, the Secretary of State for Alabama, and Kyle Whitmire, who is a journalist over at AL.com. Now, before we say anything about this, I want you to know where I stand so all the cards are out on the table, you can see everything. When it comes to John Merrill, I've been a John Merrill fan for a long time. In fact, before he dropped out of the Senate race, I had every intention of voting for him to be our next senator. Over Sessions, over Bradley Byrne. I mean, I think John Merrill's fantastic. I think that he's a really good politician. I think that he's a great fiscal conservative. And then Kyle Whitmire, occasionally he does some things that I think are really good. Occasionally he does some things that I give him kudos for, and just like anybody else, I try to call balls and strikes. But he does get on my nerves, and he has a pretty obvious liberal bend, at least in some of the articles that I've seen him write or or some of the videos that I've seen him do for AL.com. And so what we have here is a dispute between somebody that I really like and really think a lot of and somebody that at the absolute best, on my absolute best day for Kyle Whitmire, I have mixed feelings about. And on the worst day, I'm just absolutely furious with him. So you would think that if there was a dispute between these two, I would obviously side with John Merrill because he's the guy that I tend to align with more often than not. I want this to be a good lesson in not assuming that just because it's a person that you like making the argument, that it's a good argument, or that they are in the right. Because as much as I like John Merrill, and as much as I, at times, not always, because he does some good stuff too, but at times disagree with Kyle Whitmire, that does not outweigh outweigh the strength of the argument or the merits of what they are talking about. And this is one time where I think Whitmire actually was correct and John Merrill was wrong. So Whitmire came out with a blistering article about the State Department having no plan for the elections that were scheduled to happen on the 31st. That runoff is about to happen. And considering all the craziness that's gone on with the coronavirus... Kyle Whitmire asked and and did his job, did what a journalist is supposed to do, which is ask tough questions. He asked John Merrill a question that was tough, but by all means a fair question. And it seemed based on the reaction that I heard, and granted I was hearing it from the opinion column of Kyle Whitmire, so maybe it was overplayed or exaggerated or pulled out of context at least a little. The reaction from John Merrill was basically, this whole thing is manufactured, we don't have a plan in place because this thing isn't going to interrupt the election, and Kyle Whitmire is saying, why is there no plan in place? That doesn't even make sense. Even if this thing is going to blow over and not be a big deal, like you say, why would you not have a plan in place for an election that's coming up in three weeks? It was three weeks back when this thing was written. Now, I will grant that the tone of the article was unnecessarily harsh and that it seemed a little bit malicious coming from Whitmire. It was not an amicable opinion piece, in other words. But the concerns that he raised were legitimate. I didn't have a problem with anything that Kyle Whitmire asked John Merrill, and his concern about there being no plan in place whatsoever was 100% well-founded. Now, What I didn't want to see is somebody going in and acting like the world was collapsing if we didn't have a plan in place. You don't want to be one of those guys that's like, uh, have you ever seen that episode of Friends where Phoebe has to stop a plane and the way that she does is she says, this plane doesn't have a phalange. (laughs) You know, phalange, of course, being a a word that means one of your, your fingers. But... It, her just saying that confused people and it caused a panic and all the passengers were like, well, I want to get off this plane if the plane doesn't have a phalange. You don't want to be that guy. And I think that Kyle Whitmire was a little bit on the edge of being that guy. I don't think he quite crossed over. But it seemed as though he was intentionally trying to cause strife, saying, no, oh, no, there, there's no plan in place for the election. There, we're all going to not be able to vote, and everything's going to come crashing down. Ah, you know, that kind of hysteria. And I think Kyle Whitmire came dangerously close to being that person. I don't think he quite stepped over the threshold. But nonetheless, I thought that what he was asking about was 100% fair. 
And I think that this is a good example of what happened on a national scale. This is a microcosm of what happened on a national scare, scale with people that are involved in politics. Because John Merrill's response was very similar to President Trump's response, which is essentially, look, the media is making a bigger deal out of this than it's actually going to be. There's no reason to have a plan in place because this whole thing is, you know, it's, it's basically just the left-wing media trying to make a big deal out of nothing. Now, here's the thing. There is a kernel of truth to that mentality because it is absolutely true that people on the left have been trying to use this to make political hay. Everybody from Joe Biden to the media themselves trying to make out that Trump is wildly incompetent and he's uh, not handling this well, not taking it seriously. But the worst possible response to that is to say, no, no, there's nothing to it. It's all just a hoax. Because then if it turns out that it's not, then you have to backtrack, which is exactly what both President Trump and John Merrill, unfortunately, have had to do. Because the people on the right, as a general rule, when this whole thing started out, they were trying to downplay it as much as possible, treat it like it wasn't a real thing. Trump and, and people like John Merrill, they didn't want this thing to happen on their watch, and they were sort of wishfully thinking that it wouldn't happen, and because that's what they wanted to happen, they acted as though that was reality, which is a really bad idea. And then on the left, it's real easy to be the person just sitting back in the chair and saying, no matter what they're doing, everything they're doing is wrong. The left has been playing this game for a few weeks now where everything that Trump does is either way too much or not enough. It's way too much or it's not enough. And there's very few people, I think actually weirdly enough, the governor of California was the only person on the left that actually complimented him on his response to this thing. The Secretary of State actually issued this particular... A press release earlier today to explain what they are going to be doing for the election. So here you can see that. So it says here that following the outbreak of Corona COVID-19 in the state of Alabama and the declaration of national emergency by president Donald Trump and the declaration of state emergency by governor Kay Ivey, secretary of state, John H. Merrill has requested an emergency opinion from the Attorney General's office related to the possible postponement of the March 31 runoff election. In the nature of keeping Alabamians safe from the potential spread of the virus, Merrill has asked if, under the emergency powers granted to the governor under Section 3191 Alabama Code, the governor has the authority to postpone the election. Currently, Neither the Code of Alabama nor the Constitution of the State of Alabama allow for the suspension, delay, or postponement of an election once the date has been set. So, a couple things we need to take away from that. First of all, when it comes to what the governor can and can't do, basically what John Merrill is asking the Attorney General Steve Marshall for is saying, okay, is it actually possible for the governor to, as a part of the state of emergency, delay an election because there doesn't seem to be a way for her to do that. And if not, we need to come up with a way for somebody to do that. But the thing that is kind of a concern for me is this is somewhat tricky business because you do not want to grant too much power to an elected official to stave off an election. Why? Because the elected official is an elected official. And because they are an elected official, they may have a political motivation for holding off on an election for some time. And what you don't want is to create some kind of loophole where an elected official can stave off them removing or, or being voted out of office or anything like that for whatever reason, whatever motive they might have, holding it off for any reason other than an actual emergency. So when it comes to this, I think that the best way to handle it, and this is just a suggestion, I, I'm open to other suggestions that may also be workable. I'm not saying this is the only way it should be done. I think that it would be smart to split up the decision to delay an election over many elected officials so that if they make that decision, it's very unlikely that they would all have a political motive to do so. And so because of that, I, I think that it should be not one person, the governor, 
and I understand the, the desire to make it a split second decision to be able to do this quickly. But that's why instead of having an entire delegation, an entire legislative body like the House or the Senate, I think that it should be split between five constitutional officers. I think that's the smartest way to handle this because surely you would be able to reach all of them or at least three out of the five in order to get a majority. So this would be my recommendation. Five people, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary of state, the attorney general, and the speaker of the house all get one vote. So when it comes to a state of emergency, once a state of emergency has been declared, if they want to delay an election, those five people vote on it. And if three out of the five vote yes, then we delay the election. And they have to, as they delay it, set a tentative date, not necessarily a permanent date, but a tentative date to hold it off until. I think that that makes the most sense. Look, I hope that this whole thing is a learning experience for all of us. And I think that this particular episode between Kyle Whitmire and John Merrill should be a teaching experience for us specifically and not operating on wishful thinking as opposed to what's actually going on. Because believe me, I don't want a crisis like this. And I know that there are some people on the left, not all of them, but there are some people on the left that really do because they think it will hurt Trump. And maybe it will, I don't know. But a lot of them were operating on the idea that this was going to become a major catastrophe because it's what they wished for. And there were a lot of Republicans on the other side doing the opposite, hoping that this was going to be way overblown and overstated because that's what they wanted to happen, as opposed to operating based upon the facts and what was actually most likely to happen. That's a mistake that I think both Whitmire and John Merrill made in this particular thing. I think John Merrill probably to a greater extent than Whitmire in this particular scenario. But I think that, that should be a lesson to all of us to go where the facts lead, not just where we want the facts to lead. That we make our judgment based on objective truths instead of things that are subject to a person's emotions or whims or what we want to happen. Ultimately, I think that is the lesson to be learned here. <laughs> So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.